Hello, and again, welcome to BitDepth. I'm Santiago Ramones. Across from me, through the power of the internet, is... Hi, my name is Natsune, Natsune Oki, from Japan. I'm very excited to have you on. Uh, so, as usual, my first question is, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so I am a host at Life Up Education TV, which is a media outlet that I'm developing where I talk about art and science of success and high performance. So I would interview people from like science, technology to like artists, like uh, people from all walks of life to ask them, you know, some scientific questions and also like artistic questions about like what inspired them to uh, perform at the high level, uh, what gets them up, like stuff like that. Yeah, And I also it published my book called The Game of Self-Domination within the same domain. Uh, the book, this book talks about how to create mental transformation in three different phases, uh, which we can get, get into later. And now I also have a business um, in Tokyo where it's called foreignconnect.org. And Basically, what I do is I help Japanese companies to enter American market by connecting them with local partners and local services. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Which of these things, I guess, do you consider to be your your biggest passion? Oh, my biggest passion by far is Life of Education TV. Uh, I to- this is something I talk about in my book too, but I basically say there's this concept, it's called Ikigai. Have you heard of it? I have. Ikigai, right? So it's a Jap- like a Japanese philosophical concept of life where it describes what's the d- difference between passion and like speciality, uh, your mission. And you have like, this like a four circles combining uh, into Ikigai at the center. Have you seen the chart? Like, have you seen the... I don't know if I've seen the chart. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically my my point of that is um, this is something I expand a little bit in my book where I talk about, so, okay, Ikigai is, it's not strategic if you want to use it as a framework to only pursue one thing, because when it comes to business or even investing, like you always want to diversify your income streams, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you can allocate everything and anything you do from what you'd like to do. But instead, you should also look at it from the perspective of cash flow. So you can have something that's going to finance you and, you know, make sure that you have some sort of cash uh, cash flow going on, which doesn't have to be your passion or mission or something you're passionate about, but rather you should like have that as your, like a stable something coming in. So that can come from your skill that com- can come from something you can provide. Um, so that's kind of how I place Foreign Connect as of now. Um, but um, yeah, to come back to your question, my mission, my passion is definitely the Life of Education TV, which is basically a channel that I want to deliver this message about possibility of human being. Um, and I, this is a big, big theme of my life. I'm so inspired by possibility of humanity. Like, I think we're, we can be very strong. We can be very much capable. Um, we can once we decided to drive our own mind and our own action and everything, I think we can be very, very strong person. But then with all the noises and all the systems we're surrounded by, I think we get distracted. And then I guess we're programmed to be put a little bit weaker than we are. So I kind of want to break that limit and then unlock that and really allow people to see it. And then, It doesn't have to always come in the form of entrepreneurship, not at all. Like my mission here is to, I guess, unleash people's potential by their means, like not according to my mean, right? Like everybody has their own thing and I really want to get the bottom of it, which is something I talk about once again in my book. I talk about the importance of self-awareness and that comes from this quote from ancient Greek philosopher, he says, happiness is virtues of activities, meaning that 
you are becoming like ultimately the happiness in life is to meet your true potential to meet who you are in a true sense so that means that you will have good things and bad things but as long as it belongs to you as long as it belongs to your journey as long as it belongs to your characteristic building time like at the end of the life when you meet your true self by overcoming all these things you, like at finally you're finally like happy if that makes sense so along you know along this journey like if you look at it like that you literally really enjoy every single moment of your life because it's just so adorable like every moment you spend every moment you are challenged you you face failure like all this time just really builds up your character to become who you really are you know so that's kind of where i come from with life up education tv where i just want to tell people look like don't be scared don't protect yourself too much like just change your perception about like maybe things might look hard for you right now but really change you know understand that these things happen because it's going to build your character and it's going to unlock you i guess gives you a permission to be who you are yeah yeah wow that's that's really good uh, <laughs> so i guess going to the beginning if you will mm -hmm. how did you get to the point to where you wanted to start talking about uh, success, start talking about Ikigai and start wanting to share this sort of story? How did you get to this point? Yeah. So I think like looking back my life, it's been very, it's been very unique and I, I would say courageous. I, I've taken many courageous decisions in life. I think if anything, if I can say something about myself, it's that I'm very courageous. That's one thing I'm very certain about myself. Um, and, you know, at times when it's a, it's a con consequence, if you are a courageous person who decides to pursue a courageous life, it's an absolute master consequence that photos for your life decision is you will face a lot of shit. Like yeah. <laughs> you will face, like you're so burnable to risks. You're so burnable to like all the rejections and everything. Right. But at times when I have been courageous, I encounter many of these. Right. But then at first I didn't look at it as my gift. I, I didn't look at it as like something to embrace. I always let my negative thought or, uh, gravity to just hold me down, right? Whenever I face that. But then even if I I had that attitude at the end, whenever I overcame those moments, I always ended up with this like tremendous feeling of like, wow, like, you know, I'm alive. Like, mm -hmm. like I learned so much, like I feel so good. Right. And then I didn't see the pattern until later. Uh, so at one point I kind of thought, wow, like I'm just so tired. Like, okay. So one point I decided to move from, I was living in Seattle and I just decided to move completely to a different new city with no money, no connection, no nothing. I didn't know nobody. I'm Japanese too. Like it's a foreign country. Right. And then I decided to move to Florida and like, it was so bad at, uh, for first because I didn't even have like a good uh, work permission visa, which I did, but it was like so limited. So no one wanted to hire me. I didn't know nobody. I didn't even have an apartment. Like at one point it got so bad that I was living from one place to another in a matter of a week. Like it was just so crazy time. Right. And then at that time, I just, I was just so tired of it. I thought, wow, like what a loser. Right. And I thought I just needed to like settle, even though I was super young. Like I, I thought let's, let's just, um, you know, pursue what is recommended by the society. Let's just, you know, get a regular job. Like, let's just, you know, stop the adventure side of me. And so anyway, so at that time, like I kind of decided to uh, settle a little bit more, but then like very soon I was so bored and, you know, I, I just noticed that at that point, I noticed that it was against my virtue. It wasn't aligned with who I was and I was becoming very bored. So to come back to your question, um, I kind of always had that 
potential of me where I lived for suffering. Like I, like it sounds so weird if I put it like that, but I think I enjoy acquiring my emotional capability and um, just capability in general to overcome this humiliation, this suffering, to this like desperation. Like these things makes me stronger, and I actually enjoy it. And I thought, wow, like this is probably unique. Like not everybody can think like that. And I really wanted to uh, kind of expand that myself as well. But then, you know, people started like talking to me when, whenever they had a problem, because I always had this, like such a strong attitude whenever I faced diverse adversities. So I guess people started like asking me, like, uh, I even developed this mental framework, I, which I put it on my book, but basically I put it because people told me like, why don't you just like write a book? Because like, like everybody comes to you literally, like whenever we have a hard, hard time, like we kind of come to you and then you kick our ass and you know, we're good. Like, so I thought, wow, that's interesting. So I decided to write a book at that point. And then I thought, wait, wait a minute. Like, why don't I start like a show, like a, you know, actual like a video like a series where I can um, invite people and talk about this stuff because I'm so passionate about it so um, yeah that's kind of how the whole thing comes down to it but even without this media like my theme of life is the same thing I'm always very inspired by the possibility of humanity like I'm so excited what excites me is whenever I see the impossible uh, being possible because of like humans, you know, like a strong will, like a strong willingness. And I think it's, it's really amazing um, to witness any of these events. And it gives me the inspiration to create something for other people as well. So that's kind of where I come from. Yeah. No, that's really cool. Yeah. What is... I guess your own definition of success, what, what is, or I guess, is there a point that you get to, to success or, uh, what does it mean to you whenever you have succeeded, I guess? Right. So this is, this is super interesting that you brought it up because this is exactly how I end my chapter of my book. So basically I define uh, the difference between happiness and success. And my whole book is predicated on the idea that you always want to have inspiration to strive for. And that's our, basically that's our purpose. That's our life purpose to find that inspiration. And yeah. yeah. And then um, like, for example, if we talk about money, money has three roles. The first one is freedom. We don't like money because uh, because of its like, you know, the paper, the physical paper, right? <laughs> like we, we like it because it allows us to have this sense of freedom. We can do whatever we want to do. Um, it's not that we want to spend all day, all night uh, for years and years sleeping. That's not why we like money. Uh, so like, this is one of the thing is that like, you are not lazy. You just don't know what you want. That's it. Like people want to do something. Um, so I think there's this little bit misconfusion right there. And then the second thing about money is luxury. So what I, when I say luxury, luxury is not the experience or the material itself. Luxury is the ability to dream. Money gives you the ability to dream, um, the ability to be creative in life. And then the third one is security. So when I talk about these, right, like the luxury part really ties close to what I'm going to say, which is, you always want to have a reason to strive. Like the idea of owning car is more exciting for you than having the actual car, right? And that's the ability to dream. And when you have that excitement, when you have that like a creativity and, you know, like a childish dream, whatever, that just purely excites you, like that's like the greatest feeling you can have. And so when I look at success, uh, one portion of is that like to have to have this like a um, little bit unrealistic, but then like 
uh, the unique idea specific to you that excites you to uh, get you up from the bed and something you have as an inspiration to strive for. And um, to come back to your question, actually, I want to expand on this. And that being said, success can never be achieved. Success is always in the future. So, for example, speaking of the inspiration, you don't look back whatever you achieved already in the past and you say, oh, my God, I'm so excited by the success I have already achieved, (laughs) right? Like you don't call that as success. It's part of you already. Like it's not something you're striving for. You're not facing forward in that way. So what I want to say with this is you want to have that inspiration that always makes you move forward. And it's always happening in the future. Something that excites you, something that like having it itself is not even the matter. It's the process. It's the basically whatever that you want, the ability to dream, like it's a tool. It's a tool to get you excited. It's a tool to inspire you, right? So to once again, to come back to your question, I think at the end of the day, success is not for you to achieve. I think success is a concept. It's also a global concept that should be celebrated uh, whenever we have this feeling of like excitement and other people hating on it. Like we should celebrate that, right? It's a global concept. Um, But yeah, success is always in the future and success is something we strive for. Yeah. What inspires you? Um, So I would definitely say it's the possibility of humanity. Um, an advancement of humanity. Like the one other reason I decided to study economics over business, which I ended up studying both pretty much. But economics, I like because I'm more macro driven person. My view of life is very macro. I don't necessarily uh, think of micro stuff. Like, for example, I often say I don't care what people say about me. And that's that's kind of correct way, I think, um, if I will, um, to say about my life view, because otherwise you would be pulled into so many different directions and you can't even move if you have like a purpose to strive for. So to some degree, you kind of have to have that like a diva attitude, but (laughs) I, I often say like, I don't care what people say, but that what I uh, that's me talking from micro perspective I, I really don't care what people say in micro but I ultimately what I'm driving for is the feeling and emotion and um, love for people really at the macro sense I, I care about people in macro like I want to achieve something for the humanity in my lifetime and I see it from like once again, like a macro uh, view, I don't see I would achieve anything, to be honest, like with my my time only. But then I, su- I could still be the incremental improvement for the humanity as a whole. So that's the way I look at it. And it gives me motiv- uh, inspiration. And also another thing I, I would say is that being able to provide loves and I think I'm very lovable person at the like at the core and just by nature. And my definition of love is not um, I guess my definition of love is willingness. My definition of love is you can provide love for yourself, you can provide love for your dream, you can provide love for your people around you because it's a willingness. It's it's the courage to say look, I'm not going to give up on me. Look, I'm not going to give up on this person. Look, I'm not going to give up on this dream, right? Like you care for it and you want to provide your care. You want to provide your like willingness to pursue it. Even if you are challenged, even if you are hurt, you, even if you're rejected, even if you are challenged against it, like you care for it and you would pursue at all cost. That's love, I think. So I think that's something... I I can't necessarily say I'm super up there in that, but I'm once again like I'm passionate person in life. I'm lovable person in life. I think that just aligns with my nature. 
that I like to provide loves because I care about things and I care about me and I care about people around me. I care about my dream. And I'm never like this cynical person who says, see, like, you know, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to look stupid. So I'm not going to pursue it. Like that's not me. So some, that is something I think I'm inspired by. And I think this is something that we need in the world a little bit more uh, because of the nature of our generation, but also like, um, you know, everything is balanced. So when you have a good, there's always bad. And then that's good. Like that's the balance. We need to have a balance in order for us to function in the way we function. Like you always need a competition, right? But that said, uh, my point is, when there's a positivity, optimistic people, when there, uh, there is also negative and cynical people, right? And that's just, that's okay. That's how it is. But I think the world seems more beautiful when we can increase just a little bit more positivity and, you know, like uh, optimistic view of life than just being all cynical and sad. So I want to contribute in that positive side of the voice, especially using the internet. It's so, so scalable. Yeah, no, that's yeah. really cool. And I, I love that you uh, have sort of your own approach to what love means to you and what success means to you. Uh, I guess more of a simple grounded question. What brought you to the United States? Why? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I think, um, so have you came to Japan before? Have you no, I have, I, I wish. Yeah, you should. It's, <laughs> it's fun. Um, but anyway, so I was born and raised in Japan and to be like completely honest, I never really liked it. Hmm. Um, I mean, now I have a whole another view of my country, um, uh, having a chance looking at it from outside of the world, um, outside of Japan. But yeah, to be honest, like growing up, I really didn't resonate with everything that they did here in Japan. Like I mentioned this in my book bio, for example, I almost got kicked out from my high school. <laughs> and that's because, you know, I'm a weirdo here. Like I'm, I'm this different person in Japan. I, I know, I mean, difference is scary to any nations, but Japan has such a, I think, strong... Uh, fear when it comes to that being different is so like being different is scary in America but then being scary is scarier in Japan that's one <laughs> thing I can say for sure so you know when you have your own opinion when you have especially when you're a woman and you have this like ambition like like for example uh, men wouldn't like you as much, mm -hmm. uh, just to talk about dating life, but, uh, that's not my primary reason, but just to give you more context of like where we are, uh, in terms of even feminism, but in terms of just like a people as in general characteristic, um, like a difference is not so much appreciated here. Like I was talking about this, uh, consequence of Japanese education system in another podcast the other day, for example, our education is like when you go to history class uh, in high school or whatever, like the only thing we're tested on is our function, our memory function, our uh, capability to be a part of machine or system. Like our education system is still uh, following the guideline of like industrial era, like for example, when you think about Japanese economic growth, it was significant when we were still in the industrial like time, right? Like we we were able to produce efficiently, we were able to function like machine. We don't make uh, we make less mistakes and you know stuff like that. Um, but consequence of that is people are not creative here. And I mean, creativity is not appreciated as much. So we end up having an economy where, um, for example, America, you guys are great at coming up with like innovative companies, like innovative ideas about products. Like a lot of those like uh, big corporations right now on the internet comes from America. And then Japan, what we're good at 
following from the industrial time, we're still good at making things efficiently and then like making, um, improving things. So we would take ideas from big corporations like Apple or whatever, the American corporation, and we'll just make something better. Like we'll just make, so the, my point is the idea is never here. Like we're not trained to come up with creative ideas or we're not trained to uh, come up with our own ideas. But then rather, we're good at making things better, making things more efficient, making things more organized. Like these are the things we're good at. And me, I was not, um, I didn't fit into the system, which I don't say this is good or bad, right? Like it's, I think it's a, there's a pros and cons to be certain ways in each countries. But in terms of my characteristic, I just couldn't fit in because I always had my opinion. Like micro stuff never meant anything to me. Like I always thought macro, I always thought uh, effects of something. And I, I was a very curious kid. And once again, I was being courageous kid because the fear of like the fear of not being myself scared me more than the fear of not following the rule of the society. So that's why I decided to be me. And then that got me into so many troubles. <laughs> and then basically led me to, I remember like this one morning, the entire students from the entire school, literally entire school I'm talking about, were called in to this uh, conference room, whatever. And I mean, 300, 400 kids. And then they were making about a dirt, talking about this student, this student might get kicked out of high, uh, of school or whatever. And I was like, holy shit, that's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was so crazy. But, um, you know, I, it got me a lot of trouble for me being the curious kid. And then, so to come back to your question, it was just necessary. Like, I, I think I thought, wow, like I cannot succeed if I stay in this country. Uh, I know that I mean to do something, but if I have to be successful in this society, I have to be like them and I cannot be like them. So I got to do something about it. And it just came natural to me. Like I, I always thought I should go out of the country. And if I missed that chance, I probably wouldn't have any chance to go. So I thought, well, why don't I just like go to America and see what happens? And that was like one of the best decisions I've ever made. I, I truly felt like I was home. Yeah. What, what was it, I guess, specifically in America that kind of, I guess, confirmed your views about uh, being your own individual and how did that contribute to how your life improved with that? I think, um, I mean, it kind of goes with the same concept of like being a startup versus like corporation. I think there's a lot of like similarity in this concept, but basically Japan failure is a shameful thing to do. But in America, I, I just felt like, wow, people really don't care here. Like, I mean, you always get the second chance. You always like, you're, if anything, I felt like compared to Japan, I'm talking about, you were encouraged to fail, meaning fail as in like be different. Um, and even fail, right? Like fail faster and just pick yourself up and go. Like you always get a second chance. But uh, like in Japan, like, oh my God, it's impossible. Like you <laughs> cannot, you should feel a shame on you. Like if you even slightly, like even slightly fail or even make attempt to be different you should feel shame on you like that's the kind of pressure you have here so you know just I don't know like I like for example I guess this is kind of like a I don't know it's like a maybe could come out weird example sounds like but for example like um you know yeah, the way Americans dress versus the way Japanese dresses like America has more casual attitude a lot more um like there's no 
like you can't do this you can't do that you look stupid you look like you know you should feel ashamed on how you look right now like you know there's not that uh peer pressure on that like you guys are more free like you guys are more true to yourself authentic but in japan like i don't know like it's people feel shame like if people would point finger at you and like when you are a stranger you when you are i guess different like by any mean if you look different or think differently like people just want to point finger at you and say wow like you're you loser like you you think differently like you should feel shame on you like it's kind of it's very hard to explain this but when I went to America, like that was the true feeling I had where I thought, wow, these people really don't care. Huh? Right. Like, mm-hmm. but in a good, good sense, really, like, I think that's what makes them hard. Like Japanese people are so soft mm. and that's because they don't get rejection. They don't like, they like to agree to things. They don't like conflict. They don't like, so just so soft, you know, mm-hmm. and <laughs> but once again like there's also good and bad side of it right like it's all about context but in terms of just nation as itself once again there is also um, pros and cons and also self-awareness of the culture so i'm not necessarily saying one way or another is bad but in terms of me being in the picture i just didn't feel good being in that environment and to come back to your question i think one thing I realized was, yeah, how casual American people are and also how that allowed them to feel a little bit less serious about life, a little bit less worked up. So worked up on like making mistakes, like failing, like, you know, like for example, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to give you one example. You're fine. Um, yeah. Like for, for example, in school system in Japan, like you get this nasty, nasty look if you make mistakes. Like if you raise a hand, I mean, which is a sign of leadership, you should be like appreciated for that act, right? When you're a kid. But when you raise a hand and then when you get the answer wrong, you would get such a nasty look from teacher, from kids around you. Like everyone thinks, wow, you're so stupid. Like you shouldn't even try, right? And then we even have this fa- uh, phrase where it, we say, meaning like know your words and act within your words. And I mean, who the fuck cares about your words? <laughs> like that's not inspiration at all. Like if you always, if you're a scary cat and then always try to stay within the words, you can never have the opportunity to expand your words. And then expanding, like knowing you expect that, I mean, exceeding your expectation is what inspires me so there's this definite gap like a conflict in the way they operate in japan versus the way i operate my life so you know i i, I hope you got the little bit of a picture of yeah. uh, where i come from definitely yeah. um i guess one last question on this front of uh, yeah. what advice do you have for other people that are wanting to start their own business or start their own uh, media or write a book and publish it, what advice would you give to those people? Right. So I actually, I was listening to Gary (laughs) right before this interview and he said something very interesting and I very much resonate and agree with. He says, don't listen to your positivity. Don't listen to your negativity. Only listen to your market. And then meaning that when you, keep listening to your positivity you become entitled and soft if you only listen to your negativity you become cynical and scary uh, i mean scared and uh, uh, and weak and then if you listen to the market you basically become practitioner like you are able to be realist and then you're able to navigate your own action according to the market which is basically what the emotional intelligence is like i talked about difference between being independent and being interdependent Hmm. and that's exactly where it comes from like 
we tend to, once again, it's a macro thinking, like we tend to, because we are stuck in our own body, right? Like the whole life, the only perspective we have is within this own body, within this own perception, but we are literally the part of the bigger system, which is to have this thinking of being in, interdependent, understanding that we are part of the system. It's never about you. Never at all. When you have a hardships, when you are happy at any state, it's never about you, right? Like you're just like playing within this like a small bubble. Like it's just only your world, which has an advantage to it too. Because when you know that, like you really don't give a fuck about your failure at all. Like you can just like, well, well, I, I fucked up, but you know, it's just me having this perception and I, I can always like turn this around and there's no really meaning to things, right? Like you can always like shift your thinking because of it too. Um, but anyway, so I very much resonate with this I, uh, advice because I really believe this is, this is truly <laughs> something um, important to always remember of, which is, when you're happy, remember that it's not about you. When you're sad, especially when you're sad, remember that it's never about you. It's mm. always about the market. So know how to be emotionally intelligent and don't take your personal life or even like a personal success of business, in business as a sign of something, right? Like it's always neutral. You can always keep it neutral. If something happened, that mean that doesn't mean bad or good. It just means it happens, and that's it. Like you can always, you have to be always ready to adapt to the market. Like, so I guess once again, sorry to uh, come back to your point. I guess to make it positive, I would say when you fail, like don't make it too personal. Like it just happened. That's it. Like stand back up and start a new thing. That's it. Great. Yeah. Switching gears and there's no real good way to transition into it. What is the role of spirituality or religion in your life? In my life? Um, so I'm, how do you say, into, how do you say, um, the person who doesn't have the religious, like religion? Um, oh, I guess uh, atheist or secular atheist. or, yeah. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i i am that yes um but i do believe that once again like we are part of a bigger system uh i look at once again like my view is so macro i look at humanity as a macro thing and we are part of a bigger system trying to achieve something greater and then something good for the generation tomorrow, like generation future. So I don't necessarily have a specific belief in a specific religion, but with this framework of thinking, it gives me deeper connection with the universe, gives me deeper attachment to the humanity. Um, and I kind of see it as like a whole united thing. Like I, I don't necessarily see us being separated too much, even me and you, like we're entirely different location. Like it's kind of hard to see that we're one thing, but we are really one thing. Um, but we need to like really step back from our body and see that. But then now we are still in the, you know, trapped in this one body. Like it's very hard to relate. Uh, but I, yeah, so that's kind of my take. Like I, I look at it from a macro yeah. perspective that I, I see the whole thing united and then I just want to contribute to navigate our united, I guess, soul or just one unit to move forward in a direction that's going to make us happy. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the atheism what is your definition of god whoa <laughs> <laughs> um i think 
Well, but this is this is very deep now. I think I never <laughs> really had a chance to think about that. Um, like honestly, I'm sorry if I can't come up with like a good good answer right now. But since I wrote my book, it's called The Game of Self Domination. In terms of, I would talk about micro a little bit. Um, I think in terms of us trying to navigate through our lives the most important asset you have is your own mind. Um, I mean, I would very much like to talk about universal concept, but I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go back to macro. So uh, micro. So yeah, in order for us to navigate our own life and then of course to be a part of one thing, um, but to navigate our life the best way possible to be the best version of ourselves as possible. I think it all comes down to your mindset. It all comes down to how you um, look at the world, how you change your perception around things. Um, you know, the one thing that's common for all the high achiever, I believe, is their mental fitness. So they're able to look at stories or narrative. They're, they are able to choose the narrative or story that's going to make them push during the hard times. And that's what separates them from the list. So um, to come back to your question, I don't know if God is a good difference word, but I would say that mindset is very important. Uh, when you look at your life as an individual person, I think mindset is something that's going to drive you to either direction, like positive or negative. Cool. <laughs> I like that a lot. And that's, uh, and I like that approach. So yeah. Um, <laughs> that's good. Then I'm wondering about which one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no worries. How do you determine what good or moral behavior is? Um, good or moral behavior. Oh, um, like this is like super deep. Like I, <laughs> I never like have a chance in a daily life to think about these things. I mean, like for sure, immoral is something that moral, good or moral behavior. You know, this is a com there is a conflict too, on to be honest. Like, you know, when we look at when we look at society as a whole, like leaders are in a tough position. Like they are forced to make decisions that doesn't necessarily please everyone in the picture. But then they sometimes are forced to make a decision between sacrificing a little for a greater good and then sacrifice, um, right? Like that's that's a one decision that they have to make. So topic of moral is very, um, still kind of like not so set within me, like, but once again, I think when I think about it, uh, one of the things, once again, I talk about in my book is in order for you to create a change, you first need to abandon your victim um, attitude. Like that's for sure one thing you need to do. And you need to be strong. Uh, like you can only rely on yourself, right? So when it comes to good and moral, I'm a big believer of like everything happens for a reason and we don't necessarily can't face unnatural force. Like things mean to happen and then that's how we balance the world. So that's how I see it. So I don't try to protect something from happening or I don't try to protect someone or anything because I think it plays a big, I mean, important role in making the whole picture working so that being said i think even if like leaders when they have to make a decision that potentially can hurt someone in the name of greater good like i think it might need to happen still so 
I think as long as the intent is to still like, you know, comes with the love, comes with like the hope to, you know, mm, like help people. Mm, I think that's moral, even if it's against against the moral, like, you know, once again, like a micro picture, like even if it's contributing to a bigger, greater thing, it's a very tough decision, but they still would make make it in an as long as the intent comes from uh, wanting to do something good for the humanity, I think that's that's a moral. Yeah, I like that a lot. Good, well, good. What do you think humanity? But, oh, go ahead. No, what what do you think about this? <laughs> uh, well, we can. Uh, I will put a pin in that one and we will talk about it on the conversational okay. one. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'll try and remember that one, but uh, remind yeah. me if I forget. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. So what do you think humanity yeah. is heading towards in the future? Um, like, honestly, I don't, I don't know. And I don't make any expectation. I think I cannot know what's good for people, right? Like I don't, I cannot know what's, I know what's good for me. I cannot know what's good for the other people and for the future people. Like, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> I was making a joke uh, before because I had this crazy idea of like, we're going to lose our gender in the future, like, you know, 100, 200 years from now. And then we'll just basically become this, um, like, for example, I mean, like, we have a lot of issues um, with being human, right? Like, environmental issue, and, like, we're not efficient. We're still animal. We're not efficient. So I, I thought there was this possibility of us possibly converting into, you know, some sort of, I don't know, technological form or some sort of like still a uh, live form, but then with a little bit of, I don't know, like another creature. And you, have you seen American Dad? It's a sure, American yeah. cartoon. Mm -hmm. Do you know Roger, the character Roger? Mm -hmm. It's an alien character. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, We're going to be someone like Roger. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but that was a, that was a joke. But anyway, so I, I, I thought that really, like I thought maybe we're going to lose its gender and we're just going to, be something more efficient like i mean we don't know at that point if we're gonna live in the earth right like they say that japan will disappear in 100 years or so so you know we don't know what's gonna happen but um yeah like to come back to your question i think we we uh what made us survive all these years is our creativity and the ability to adapt over time so I think whatever happens to our humanity, I have a faith in us that we're going to adapt to whatever we need to adapt to. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, do you believe humans are evil by nature? Evil by nature? Wow. <laughs> you ask me a lot of deep questions. <laughs> the uh, podcast is called Bit Depth. I like to get a bit deep. Right. Um no, I saw that in a description. I was looking a little bit scared, but okay. <laughs> okay, so do we think evil? Um, I think, okay, I think the be better description of this is we are driven by two factors. One is the word. Another one is threat. And I think that we are like when I think of evil, I think of like threat, and then like we, the more like we we are scared animal, right? Like we're scared of making stuff happen and doing things. That's that's how I kind of see evil because we don't necessarily do things out of our intention, I don't think. Like, I think when you look at countries, like, uh, where was it? 
where was that? I forgot. Norwegian or something. Um, but basically the prostitution rate is way lower in one of those countries. And then that is because women have equal right. Like they don't have to do things to survive, right? But so that comes really that comes from the threat. Like if they are able to bring themselves up, I mean, this is not talking about the individual level. I'm even talking about the government level. Like if they can manage the system where um, nations are safe, I don't think there's much chaos happening, right? So I don't necessarily see humans as threat, I, uh, sorry, evil. I think it's more of that factor of viewers and threat um, factors that drives us to do things. Yeah. What are you optimistic about for our future? Optimistic about for our future. I think during this pandemic or even like in general, but especially with this pandemic, I think we are more like we're stronger. Like whenever something like this hits, once again, comes back to my very original point that we covered earlier, I see it as opportunity for us to be stronger. I see it as opportunity for us to grow. And these are the times really like when you look back, you appreciate it a lot because it builds your character. It builds who you are in a stronger sense. And I think I'm very optimistic that regardless of everything happening right now, I think this is giving us a new perspective and realization of who we are, making us stronger and I think this really teaches us and gives us perspective moving forward when we even go back to the normal state. I think this is going to remain us, remain with us as something positive that the time that builds our character. And once again, everything is balanced. So when there's a good, I mean, sorry, when there's a bad, there is a good. So the good thing will follow for sure. Definitely. That's great. Yeah. What makes you content? Content. What do you mean by content? Sorry, uh, that means. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, content is a word different from happiness, but similar. <laughs> so uh, it's sort of like, in a way, satisfaction, but not, it's not quite happiness, but it is mm. good. <laughs> In the state of peaceful happiness. Yes. Okay. Uh, to know that if I suck, I will fail. I think that makes me peacefully happy. And I, I, I tell you what I mean. Like, this is probably comes from the spirit of I'm not afraid of fa failing. Like, that's probably what it comes down to is that I'm, I don't try to protect me. Like, if you suck, you will fail. And that's it. Like there's no further definition to it. Like it doesn't mean that you're failure. Like failure is never about a person. Failure is always about event. And then the one who will fail and stay fail is the one who's going to suffer. But then if you're smart, like I trust myself, I, I have a face in myself enough that I know that I'm not going to make it as like for every event, I, I know that I'm going to acquire skills that's necessary for me to become stronger, become more wiser, more capable and come back and build something new. Like I'm not afraid of failing. And once again, like, I think I live for that humiliation and even like, you know, that burning, um, you know, I don't, revenge is a very strong word, but in a sense, yes, like I don't necessarily... I'm, I'm not afraid of it. And that makes me very peaceful because that makes me focus on what's really important, which is growth. Like I'm not, I'm not interested in defending. I'm not in interested in defense. I, I never play a game of who's right or wrong. Like things don't have a meaning. Like if you fail, you fail. That's it. Like if you suck, you fail. That's it. Like, <laughs> and then like when you truly embrace that and then, 
when you really have that mindset to uh, look at failure from another lens, like of positivity, like you, you really can't be afraid of it. Like if anything, you will welcome it. And then you will say, wow, like this is another opportunity for me to become better, like become stronger and, um, you know, focus on what's important, which is to be better. So yeah, I think that gives me peace Yeah, for happiness. Yeah. When will you be satisfied uh, to be completely honest with you, like, I mean, I have been in many, like, different state, I think, of mine. And, um, I mean, at one point, like, you know, I did that party life, too. Like, I, I've been on a yacht, like, on the weekends, and I just, like, you know, going to all these, like, different garas and, like, you know, parties, whatever. Um, and, but, I mean, those were, like, a picture of happiness for me like I I thought it what was going to be you know the picture of happiness but it really wasn't and when I was truly satisfied like believe it or not I was suffering like I was like, <laughs> so suffering like I was I you know I failed one of my business I had before this and you know I was so like thankful as I knew that I was failing at that time like I was just so thankful because I was living, I was alive. Like I, I felt like, wow, like this is so emotional to me. Like I suck shit right now, but like, I know that I'm becoming stronger. I know that I'm becoming more capable and I love myself for like being up for my challenge. And I'm like, you know, like I just saw this true value of myself and I loved me because of that even more. So I think to come back to your question, I don't necessarily expect a point of life in the future where I'm going to be satisfied, but this is a feeling I acquire everyday basis. I'm, I'm just so thankful. I think for wherever I am, I, I just feel like I love myself. Like I, I love my life because it's very beautiful, you know? Yeah. What advice do you have for people in general? In general? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I think my big thing once again is the possibility of humanity. And that being said, that cannot be met without the spirit of failure, failing, like spirit of separating failure. So that's, yeah, number one, hands down that advice I, I want to give to people is, you know, no whose opinion matters the most when you fail. Do you care about other people's opinion the most or do you care about your opinion the most? It's the game of self-domination. So you need to, um, which is the name of my book. Um, so you need to, um, you need to really stop protecting yourself and be willing to enjoy even the failure journey. And that's going to make you stronger. And you know, focus on what's truly important, which is growth. So always make sure your success follows, but really focus on what's truly important. Yeah. Last question. Yeah. Cake or pie? <laughs> pie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is, I guess, your ideally favorite pie or the best pie? Best pie? Wow. <laughs> um, let's see. Mm, I said, um, pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Ooh, cool. I yeah. Like pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that one's different than the ones that I normally hear. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> what, what do you normally hear? Um, more like fruity pies, like, um, apple pie or, uh, okay. Maybe. I mean, pumpkin is kind of fruity, no? <laughs> <laughs> is pumpkin a fruit? Uh, <laughs> uh, Natsuna, thank you so much for doing this with me. Uh, where can we find you and your things? Yeah. So 
I'm a host at the Life Up Education TV, which you can find on YouTube, but also I have a website. It's called lifeupeducationtv.com. My, my book, The Game of Self-Domination, is releasing in August 27th. Uh, so you can purchase it through my website. It's also available on Amazon. I have TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Natsune Oki. Uh, Twitter, yeah, that's about it. Oh, Facebook. So, <laughs> but I mean, all these social links you can find on my website, lifeupeducationtv.com. Great. Awesome. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how well that book does. I I do want yeah. to read it. I'm I'm sold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Um, again, thank you so much for, the, for doing this with me. Yeah. I'm Santiago Ramones. Um, I'm Natsune Oki. You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music. Bloom is available now, streaming everywhere. Put it on in the background or show it to your friends so you can all enjoy it together. You can also buy it on Bandcamp and get bonus content so you can sit alone in the dark with your headphones on and listen to the album in its entirety while reading and looking at the bonus content. I also make music with PowerCycle, an experimental electronic trio. Our first completely improvised album, Too Many Damn Cables, is streaming everywhere. More to come from PowerCycle in the future. To support this podcast, leave reviews, comments, tell your friends about it, and buy my music. Because by supporting me, you're supporting the podcast. I always end the podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails, it's going to be okay, I might be wrong.